In this section, you're going to learn about your immune system, how to prevent infections, and what to look for if you do have an infection. You have five different types of infection-fighting white blood cells in your body. Neutrophils are one of those, and they make up about 60 to 70 percent of your white blood cell count. They are the main defense that your body has against infections. When those white blood cells are decreased, it is called neutropenia. This simply means that you have a low white blood cell count and are at increased risk for infections. You will hear the term ANC, which means absolute neutrophil count. ANC is the measure of neutrophils, a specific type of white blood cell. When your ANC is less than 1, you are neutropenic. Chemotherapy, radiation, certain cancers, and some medications can cause neutropenia. Bacteria and viruses that a healthy person would normally fight off can make you very sick. There are certain steps that you can take to protect yourself from infections when you're neutropenic. Hand washing is the best way to prevent the spread of infection. Your hands can have many germs on them that can cause you to become sick. It is important to wash your hands after using the bathroom, before eating or drinking, taking medications, or handling any food. Wash your hands after sneezing, coughing, or blowing your nose. It is important to wash your hands if exposed to anyone who may be sick, after touching pets, and if your hands are visibly dirty. Here's how. First, wet your hands under warm running water. Use two pumps of liquid soap to work up a lather. Move your hands out of the running water to work up a lather. Rub all sides of your hands and fingers for 20 seconds. Why 20 seconds? The friction from lathering helps to remove the germs. Singing Happy Birthday or the ABC song is a good gauge of how long you should wash your hands. Rinse your hands and dry them. Use a paper towel to dry your hands as they can be used once and thrown away. Cloth towels shared with others can harbor germs. Use your paper towel to turn off the faucet, because sink handles may harbor germs, too. <laughs> you will have to be very careful during the time you are in treatment. Your body is working hard to recover and needs to be protected from germs and dirt. The extra steps you take to protect yourself from common germs may lower your risk of getting an infection you will hear over and over again that the most important step you can take to protect yourself from germs is to wash your hands. In addition to hand washing, there are other steps you can take to protect yourself. Uh, listen, I'd love to have you come over. Before people come to visit, ask them if they have a cold or other infection, or if they have been exposed to colds or flu within the last few days. If they have, it is better for your guests to wait a few days before visiting. A good rule of thumb is that people who have a cough, fever, cold, runny nose, sneezing, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea should not visit you in the hospital or home. Also remember to ask if your visitor has received a live vaccine recently, such as measles or mumps or smallpox. Keep in mind that the inhaled flu mist is also a live vaccine. Visitors who have had the flu shot are okay because it's not a live vaccine. If your visitor has any of these symptoms or had a live vaccine, they should wait three weeks before visiting. As always, ask your guests to wash their hands as they come to visit you and as they leave. Sometimes you just have to get out, whether it's for shopping, eating, or entertainment. Going out in a crowd can increase your exposure to germs. Wear a mask any time you leave the house. If you enjoy walking in the mall or going to a movie, go when the crowds are smaller, like in the middle of the day. And don't forget to wear your mask when going to clinic appointments. Dining out when there are fewer people in the restaurant, such as during the early part of the dinner hour, is better. 
While you'll wear your mask to the restaurant, it is okay to take the mask off during your meal. Don't forget to put your mask back on when leaving the restaurant. Choosing a clean restaurant can be hard during your treatment and recovery time. While buffet dining is fun and offers a lot of food choices, you should avoid eating at buffet or cafeteria-style restaurants. Foods may be left out for longer periods of time and possibly increase your risk for getting an infection. Some patrons may be double dippers. They may put the serving spoon on their plate or licking a finger and touching the food, leaving germs behind. You could end up eating contaminated food that can make you sick. Not good. When a person is undergoing cancer treatments or having a stem cell transplant, the ability to fight infection is not as strong. Touching the cat litter, changing bird cages, cleaning fish tanks, handling pet feces or poop can expose you to germs. Have someone else handle any pet feces and bathe or clean up after any animal. It's okay to pet your cat or dog. Just be sure to wash your hands afterwards. Avoid all contact with reptiles such as turtles, snakes, or lizards. This is your time to take a break from daily household chores. Have someone else do the everyday house cleaning or yard work for you to avoid dirt, germs, or mold. If you must, you can make your bed or do your laundry. During the treatment process, chemotherapy or radiation can cause your skin to be dry and flaky. Use a soap for sensitive skin and a moisturizer every day to keep your skin healthy. Protect your skin by applying sunscreen before going outside, wearing protective clothing, such as a hat and longer sleeves, and staying out of the sun during the hottest part of the day. Your mouth may become sore or tender during this time. Some of the steps you should take to protect your mouth include brushing your teeth twice a day. If your platelets are 50,000 or less, a toothette should be used. A toothette is a sponge on the end of a stick that can be used with a mild toothpaste or with a little package of tooth cleaning liquid that comes with a toothette to clean your teeth and tongue. Throw away the toothette after one use. During the day, rinse your mouth with water every two hours to keep your mouth clean and healthy. A lip moisturizer may help with your chapped lips. Remember, no sharing the lip balm. We all recognize that sharing affection and intimacy are basic human needs. As long as you follow your normal precautions, hugging, kissing, and holding hands are always okay. However, in order to have sexual intercourse, your A and C has to be greater than 1, and your platelets have to be above 50,000. Male partners need to wear a condom. During treatment and recovery, oral or anal sex is not recommended. And as always, wash your hands. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of infection is important. Here are some signs that you may be developing an infection. When you are neutropenic, fever and chills can sometimes be the only sign of an infection. It is important to take your temperature at least once in the morning and once at night. If you have a temperature of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or greater, you have a fever. If you have chills or episodes of drenching sweats, you have a fever. Take your temperature and call the clinic immediately. Check your central line site daily. If you see redness, swelling, or drainage, you may have a central line infection. Call the clinic immediately. Burning or pain with urination, urinating more frequently than normal, having the urge to urinate but nothing comes out, or noticing blood in your urine may all be signs of an infection. Call the clinic immediately. Nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea that lasts for more than 24 hours can also be a sign of infection. Call the clinic immediately. If you have sudden difficulty breathing, you may be having an allergic reaction or another problem with your lungs. This can be very dangerous. It is really important to call 911 immediately, not the clinic. <laughs> 